everybody. Welcome to the podcast. We're so excited today. We are here talking about the new film, Blinded by the Light. This is a film that I saw at Sundance, and I really wanted to talk about it with somebody, try to get some some buzz in any way that I can, uh, get people to go see it, because I really enjoyed it. And uh, I am really delighted today. I have one of my fellow critics, uh, friends that I have been following on Twitter for quite a while. Uh, my friend uh, Daniel Solzman is here. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So before we talk about the movie, I thought it'd be fun for you to uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, what inspired you to become a film critic. How did that all happen? Well, I mean, it's kind of funny. It, I definitely did not intend for it to happen. It just kind of happened that way. I was uh, writing uh, for the fan side at Network uh, for their St. Louis Cardinals side and their Kentucky Wildcats side. And back in 2013, when I was on uh, vacation, the higher-ups announced that they were restarting their film side, and I volunteered as a writer and the rest is history oh interesting so you were a uh, writer first film critic second and about worked yeah but before that i originally moved to chicago because of the improv scene oh interesting so you're you're trying to you wanted to become a a, a comic What's yeah that? that's cool huh interesting so have you, have you always been a pretty big movie buff? or? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, when I, back when I was living in Louisville, I sometimes could be going to two, three films a weekend, depending on how many new openers there were and if it was something I really wanted to see. Uh-huh. What are some of your favorite movies? Star like Wars, that. Jurassic Park, Blues Brothers. It's mm-hmm. a mad, 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 mad world, Anchorman, mm-hmm. and the list honestly goes on and on. Yeah, those are some classics of my favorites as well. I love the old Star Wars, and I, uh, Jurassic Park is in my top five of all time, so with you there. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, so you got to attend uh, Sundance this year. Uh, it seemed uh, you covered it pretty extensively in your site and so what is that like for you covering is this how many have you been uh covered Sundance before last year was my first Sundance I had a working press credential which I definitely do not recommend because getting into P&I screenings is an absolute nightmare Mm -hmm. you're standing there in line until five minutes before P&I start hoping there are seats in the theater you don't get any public tickets allotted, so you're pretty much at the uh, pr- hoping on a whim and prayer that the publicists have tickets available for you. Mm. This year, thanks to Brie Larson and being an underrepresented film critic, I was able to attend with a Press Express badge. So all that stress and anxiety that I had last year went away. Mm. That's good. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, uh, I have never gone as press officially, but I've just covered it for my own content. Um, and I, so I have a locals pass uh, that I buy. Um, and yeah, it does. It can be such a pain. Uh, so Nance, uh, you're going to, however you're covering it, but it, uh, it's it's a really really cool experience and. You know, it's an interesting thing because you, you see these movies and you get really, really excited about them. And uh, it's sort of an interesting thing to, to watch it again, watch the movies again. And, you know, you just hope, you're like, hope it holds up. I hope I like it as much because, because uh, I don't know, it's just a unique experience, the whole Sundance thing. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, it's such a film crowd. I mean, the Sundance audience, and the South by audience, they're like completely different audiences. I mean, mm-hmm. you have to really love movies to go into the cold of winter in the mountains in <laughs> January. True. <laughs> Did you have a favorite of the festival this last year? 
Uh, let's see. I mean, blinded by the light was up there. Greener grass. I mean, I've got a letter box that I've got to take a look and see what I had up there. But I know I gave corporate animals a good review. I mean, there was just so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, and then for me, I really loved uh, the the farewell. Really loved that. And I really loved uh, the report. Yeah, I enjoyed the report. Farewell, I didn't get to see until May mm-hmm. at the Chicago Critics Film Fest. And I was hearing the buzz, but at the time, I had already pulled so many audibles on my schedule late in the fest to where I just couldn't fit it in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, when I first saw it, I liked it, but I didn't love it. But I have to say, since I have a both of my both of my grandmas have passed away this year and so now it, it definitely when i rewatched it, it it i liked it it hit home even more than uh, on the uh, first watch which i still liked it i don't know had it i was pretty pretty emotional watching it on that second time i can imagine yeah so uh so anyway yeah it's an interesting experience i really want to go to south by southwest uh, one of these days uh since i uh the only one i've ever experienced is sundance since i live in utah it's convenient for me but yeah i mean south by is so much fun i mean i feel like i do more junkets than actual films there mm, yeah I mean, I cover a lot of films because they're available as screeners, but I really feel like I'm sitting in more interviews or waiting more longer for interviews to happen than actually seeing films. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, I've, I've never actually I've done, I've, I've inter- done interviews in person. Most of my interviews I've done over the phone. Um, but, uh, but I've never actually covered a junket. I would like to one of these days. <laughs> but it's a process. But uh, in person at least. Uh, so, all right. Well, let's talk a little bit about Blinded by the Light. And this comes out I think, next week. Uh, do, well, I think they're giving it a pretty decent rollout. So hopefully people will have the chance to see it. And it's based on a true story. It's about this uh, young man named Javid who <clears throat> wants to be a writer, uh, but his father is traditional Pakistani immigrant. This is in 1987 in a town, a town of Luden in England. And uh, it <clears throat> is based on the real life story of uh, journalist Sarfraz Mandor, and he, and one day he he's very frustrated. One day, one of his friends introduces him to Bruce Springsteen, and it really, really inspires him. And uh, and I I just I just love this movie. I thought it was so just so positive and so I don't know just everything that you want from a movie in my opinion <laughs> for this kind of a thing i don't know what was your first first response to the film i mean i was sitting there in the right theater i mean and i was taking in every minute of it mm-hmm. especially the music i mean i'm a big springsteen fan so that was one of the big selling points for me yeah i actually am not that i mean i don't dislike it but i wouldn't say i'm a particular fan of springsteen but what i thought was so neat was how how they connected with the idea of of just i feel like anybody who's been a fan of anything and it and it's something that's really inspired you in your life should be able to connect to this movie because i don't know just the way that i feel like in a lot of ways we sort of lost that joy a fandom you know that it can give you in your life and uh and now you know with just toxic fandoms and stuff like that I, don't, I feel like we've lost that sort of that that immediately sort of thrill and that passion when you find something that really speaks to you especially when you're a teenager 
Yeah, and, and that Born to Run set piece was one of my favorites in the film. Yeah, isn't that great? I love the way that they stage the music and uh, you kind of have the words all sort of flowing around him. Like, it just made me think about the times when I really connected with something and that I really loved. Uh, like, I don't know, when I was in high school, I was obsessed with Les Miserables. And I remember the first time I heard it and just thinking it was the most beautiful music I'd ever heard. And, and uh, just how exciting that is. And when I found out I was going to get to go see it and I was so just thrilled. And uh, I think sometimes we become a little too cynical these days how do you normally feel about coming of age films are they a favorite genre of yours or i mean it really depends because mm-hmm. yeah. like some of these films i feel like there's so many cliches that they have to uh touch on which is why romantic comedies for me i mean it pretty much has to be a fresh take on the genre for me to really enjoy it Hmm. Yeah, I definitely love me some cheesy romantic comedies, but I I tend to be kind of hit and miss for coming of age movies because some of them I don't know I I recognize the skill in making them, but I just don't connect with them emotionally because I don't know just the whole something like Edge of Seventeen, even though I know it's well made, I just I don't connect with that kind of sullen, angry teenager that just wasn't like i i was you know i was very independent but i wasn't mean and i don't know i just don't connect with this this type you see in lady bird or you see in in edge of 17 that kind of thing where it's just like they're just miserable and miserable to everybody around them and i i definitely had my moments but uh i don't know i just connect something with this much better something that's sort of positive and uh and yeah the kids being independent but i don't know i just like something like this and perks of being a wallflower is one of my one of my favorites i loved that movie and and uh i feel like this kind of has that same sort of energy And, yeah, and even yeah. with the music-centered uh, films this year, this one's one of my favorites. I mean, I'm a big Beatles fan, and I had high expectations for yesterday, and mm-hmm. that felt like such a letdown. Yeah, I agree. I was disappointed with it as well, because I, I just didn't connect with the lead character in yesterday. I mean, my, problem with, my problem with yesterday was I wasn't expecting a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just didn't think they had any. I was fine with it being a romantic comedy, but I just didn't think that they had chemistry. And uh, I, I just felt like he was kind of rude and a jerk to her. Like he, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I was fine with it being a romantic comedy, but I don't think it was executed very well. So I wasn't a big fan. I agree. Uh, and yeah, there's kind of this year is sort of the year of music with this and then uh rock man what what do you think of that yeah and then several of the music films that premiered at tiff ended up getting uh, released this year like wild rose teen spirit that's true for smell i still need to see teen spirit i heard it was pretty good i haven't seen that one but well, it'll be on hulu in due time mm-hmm. i loved wild rose i thought that was great yeah yeah really really good and so this movie is not cynical at all it is very positive and very kind of squeaky clean uh and so i was wondering if you felt like that's to its advantage or it's to its detriment i think it's uh gonna be to its advantage Mm mm-hmm and I can definitely see families uh, bringing their children to the film. Yeah, and really connecting with it. I think so. I think it just it's a movie that makes you feel good. Uh, for uh, I don't know, and I think that has value. I don't think everything needs to be like cynical these days. All right, so 
yeah so you mentioned that, that you liked how the music was staged uh they, they had 13 songs in the movie from springsteen and uh their particular what did you think of the the sequences that were sort of uh more sort of escapism uh that like like the uh thunder road sequence where they're uh dancing in the street and all of that what do you what do you think of that that one was a fun one especially when his uh friend's father joins in yeah <laughs> i love that billy joel <laughs> you think you raise your kids right <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> uh but yeah do you or you like that kind of uh break from reality that they have yeah i mean at times i wasn't sure like is this a musical part to move the plot along a dream sequence Mm -hmm. but it worked for you yeah and then they have a long section on born to run uh where uh he's going through this the whole the whole uh, town basically singing about the highway and that's definitely one of the highlights of the movie yeah mm-hmm. and you know it was interesting to me because so many people have said oh this is claimed this is the next sing street this is the next because i love sing street and i and so i went into this kind of skeptical uh but I got to being like, I think this is kind of the next Sing Street and just the, just how positive I think Sing Street is and how, uh, I think, I don't know, I feel like they're, they're pretty similar. I, I think Sing Street is probably a little bit better because it has its own songs, uh, original songs, but I think they're both pretty strong. Uh, have you seen Sing Street? Yeah, I saw it when it came out. What do you think? I liked it. Mm-hmm. What do you think compared yeah, to? I love the uh, Begin Again. And yeah. I'm not sure. I don't think I actually saw once. That's pretty and good. I think that's on my list of films I need to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, Begin Again, I thought that one was one of those underrated films that I thought should have been uh, considered for awards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, what do you think about the 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 way they handle the relationship between uh javed and his father in the movie i mean i thought they handled it okay mm-hmm. something you could connect to yeah 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 i liked it i mean it's definitely it's I, it's not like the most gritty realistic uh trail i guess but but i don't know i feel like it really worked for this this movie and i liked uh the the acting of vivi calra uh is uh it's, it's really good as J- um javed and um and i i think that uh it's cool vendor gear is i think he's good as the dad I mean because you have to kind of feel sorry he's not just some like horrible person you know one of these mother one of these mothers or fathers in a movie but he he's just you know he's just lost his job and so i think they do a pretty good job of making him feel sympathetic even though even when you're sometimes frustrated with him love this movie i thought it was so positive and so uh it just made me want to be a better person <laughs> <laughs> even though i'm not you know i i it made me want to look into bruce springsteen more because i i like i said i wasn't that familiar really with i mean i knew some of his songs but i don't know i just i just loved it and um i think people should go check it out you'll really enjoy it if you give it a chance and uh so thanks for coming on and talking about uh this movie uh with me i really appreciate it anytime yeah so how can people uh follow you on on social media and all that fun stuff on twitter and instagram i am danielle s-a-t-m d-a-n-i-e-l-l-e s-a-t-m on facebook i am to be found at salzy at the movies that's s-o-l-z-y 
as well as uh, online at salzy at themovies.com. Again, that's S-O-L-Z-Y. Great. And I'll have all that in the description section. You guys should definitely check out uh, your reviews. And uh, and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, and YouTube. So definitely check that out. And if you're listening on iTunes, if you can give your ratings or reviews, really appreciate it. And if you're listening on YouTube, if you can give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, really appreciate that as well. So thanks so much. I really am grateful for you coming on the podcast and uh, we'll have to talk again soon.